success. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath one more time. Amen. Nice to see you folks. And God is good. Amen. In spite of the situations in life. Right? Amen. Yes. We cannot complain, but just praise the Lord. That's what the child of God, because we have a bountiful, reliable Father. Amen. I wish more people would be awake right now. I said we have a bountiful Father. Amen. We have a loving Father. Amen. Right? Amen. And He is making sure that His church, that is you and I, get ready for Amen. that day. When distress, sickness, accident <laughs> will go away, right? right? Oh, yes, we have a long father. So um, I will just ask you to bow your heads right now as we talk to the Lord. Heavenly Father, this is your time. Yes. Help us to understand this important message that you sent a long time ago to the Apostle John and to the seven churches of Asia Minor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We welcome our brothers and sisters and friends that, will, that are tuning in, uh, or you will be tuning in later on. May God bless you, and you may feel the blessing of hearing God's word. Happy Sabbath to you. Amen. Let me go back just one more and thank you, Neil. That was um, that was a, a, a beautiful prayer, congregational prayer that Neil prayed. If you paid attention, there is the title of the of the sermon for today. Deuteronomy six. Oh, hear, hear, O oh Israel. How many gods do we have? One. The Lord our God, one. the Lord is what? One. one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Amen. So that, that means that I cannot divide, my, divide myself into a million pieces and say, Nine, 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 nine will serve you, but the last one won't, right? But one won't. No, he wants everything. And then the next one, in everything you do, what should we do? What should you and I do? Huh? The question is, am I putting God first? That's the question. And if we do that, the promise is right there, right? That he will guide us. He will lead us. And he will crown our efforts. Isn't he good? Amen. Huh? Amen. Isn't he good? Amen. So why do we worry? Why do we fret? The formula is right there. As we'll see in a little bit. So my sermon is. Is God first in my relationship with him? It's personal. You and I will get to heaven not because we're a bunch of good old folks trying to get along, but how much, how much I have made of Jesus as my personal God, Lord, and my personal Savior. It's not what denomination I belong to or where do I worship? Which in the end is important. Because when you and I find the beauty of Jesus, what he really means to this decaying world and what he did to save me, to give me a shot to continue living. Then 
then my approach should change. You know, it's unfortunate. Latin America is almost about the United States. 50% or plus of couples end up in marriage, end up in divorce. What is your statistic over there in Germany? Is it about the same? Probably it's a worldwide problem at this point, right? But what happens? Why does that happen? The spark of love that once we professed, right, went out. Something happened that we became careless. So, how is my relationship with God? Is he first? Just rehash a little bit from last week. The seven churches that you can read about in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. There were seven of them. Okay? Seven of them. These were actual churches. A lot of times, even people that think they're going to heaven question if the Bible is true. Ephesus, the first one. And all of them, their existence took place in a timely period of time, in a time. Ephesus, 31 to 100 AD. And it is called the Apostolic Church. Why? Because the apostles were still alive, and some of them paid the ultimate price for being faithful to Jesus. And then we have Smyrna, the first two centuries, the persecuted church, and then Pergamum, the church that compromised. Then we have Tatar. And then we go to Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. You don't want to miss next week, like I said with Pastor Tommy. Uh, I hope to be alive. I want to hear that sermon. These are messages. These are warnings to the seven churches back then. But these seven churches also represent spiritual stages of each one of us. Spiritual, spiritual stages in my walk with Jesus. So, Laodicea is known for the luke, lukewarm church. I take a look to my yesteryears. And I go and say, when was I lukewarm? When did I lose my love for Jesus? Each one of us are in a different stage. And that's why God, who is a loving Savior, put these messages, these warnings for each one of us to think where we are. Ephesus means the what? Desirable church. That's what it means. You know, beauty. The church of love. That's, that's how it started. The loving church. In that something. It would be beautiful that each church would be named Ephesus. That each of us would be named Ephesus. Ephesus, loving, loving, agape. But Revelation chapter 2, I would just want us to go there and uh, let's start with the message to Ephesus. In each message to the seven churches, 
there are seven components, seven elements, and I want to go uh, through them uh, fairly quick. The first one is an address that God sends to the pastor, to the angel of the church. And that word angel, angelos, means minister, means messenger, to the one in charge of that church. And he says, listen, I'm sending you this message. And who is it coming from? Comes from Jesus, right? Comes from Jesus. He who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks in the middle of the church. The next one, commendation. I know your works. Another version says, I've been watching you. I've been watching you. Why doesn't he say, I'm seeing you? Seeing and watching is two different things, right? Teachers, two different things. I see a picture and I watch a movie. Two different things. The Lord says in our vernacular, I know you. I know the works of you, like I said last week, personal. I know the perseverance of you. I know what you are up to, what you have done, what you're thinking right now. He is walking up and down. And that's how we ought to live our life. Not in a dissipated way. Not, you know, well, que sera, sera. You've heard that, right? Mm -hmm. The Christian is mindful of the day that he or she is living. Because it might be the last one. It might be the last one. And if God continues to bless us with life, we ought to live with the great day. How will I appear before Jesus? Right now, he is my lawyer. Right? Can you claim him as, a, as your lawyer? Yes. Huh? Are you happy that you can claim him as a lawyer? Amen. But then, we are told that the time will come that he will what? Take his robes and put what? The judge's attire. But right now is the time of salvation. Right now is the time of making changes. So I know your words. And he goes through commendation. Five of them. But then he says, but I have something against you. And we saw it last week. You have what? Left. You have abandoned. You have forsaken. You have rejected your first love. Where did it go? What happened to you? That's the warning. That is the message that is coming to us through that message that went way back yonder to the church of Ephesus. And then he gives the exhortation. What to do about it? Aren't you glad again for Jesus that he not only points out what is wrong with my life, but he gives me what? Solution. The solution. I don't like the dead, the death of the wicked. I wish you would choose life. Isn't that something? God is all powerful. Don't you think? Don't you know that? Amen. He's all powerful. But the, the one of the things, and we'll find out another thing that he cannot do. One of the things that he cannot do is to bend my will. I have free choice. He made me. I told you last, uh, when was that? Uh, a few times ago. You know, he knows that hair number one is gone a long time. And he knows where, where, where it went down to, where it's laying. You know, he knows everything. And yet, yet, he gives me the opportunity for me to make up my mind for him. And then he says, the next one is a formula. 
he that has ear, what happens? Huh? He that has ear, chapter, uh, verse 7, let him hear. Do I come with an open ear when I come to the meeting place? You understand the meeting place? It's the church. Do I have a listening ear when I have the opportunity to join my brothers and my sisters in whatever many? Do I have a listening ear to open my mouth? When I know the tongues of the Holy Spirit that, hey, <coughs> here's an opportunity to say something for, on behalf of the Lord. For him. And then, and then, the promise. That's the seventh element. The seventh component of the messages to the churches. It is to him that overcomes. Do you know? Do you realize? That heaven will be populated by humans saved by graves, but they are the ones that overcame. Only overcomers will be there. So if you're struggling of not submitting to what Jesus is telling you that you know about, well, you know to the T, you're not being an overcomer. You don't want to be in that crowd of overcomers. To him that overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life. This is the message to the church of Laodicea. Uh, I mean, to Ephesus. Each church has a different promise for overcomers. Even, even the dead church, Jesus sees overcomers. Even in the church of Laodicea, Jesus sees overcomers. Even though lukewarm, but someone listened and changed course. So the rebuke of God to the church of Laodicea. I like this, they put it, chilling words. So how come you give me these five accolades here, five ribbons, five trophies, and now you concentrate on only one thing. How much did Jesus give to save you and I? Three-fourths? Huh? He gave 100%, didn't he? So what does he expect from me? All our hearts. 100%. And this is where in Christendom, Live, live as you may. You're going to end up in hell. Very sad thing. Because it goes contrary to the word of God. You have forgotten our first, your first love. How did it happen? Five accolades. One big Rebuke. My child, Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. My child, when the Lord corrects you, pay close attention and take it as a warning. As a warning. Because the Lord warns the ones he loves. Even as a father warns a son with whom he is pleased. So, please erase from your sequence of thinking right now, what kind of sermon is this? I would rather have me preach. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible comes up. And it is true. It is true. But loving Jesus is more than just a little slogan. It's more than just a little verse, isolated. So, you have not left your first love. Why is God complaining? What is God's complaint? Well, he's complaining because in the sequence of my life, he sees that I am not the same person anymore 
as I was. Was. You don't love me first. Yes, you you may give some ties here and there. Yeah, you will show up for some church business or whatever like that. But you don't have me first. And that is the crux of the matter, brothers and sisters, in this one. God, the other thing that God cannot do is to be second. To be second. He cannot. Who am I to tell him, hey, take the back seat? He cannot. Isaiah 42, 8, from the living, from the new international version, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not what? I will not what? Come on, folks. Let, let the folks over here know that I'm preaching to somebody here. <laughs> I will not what? Yield them. My glory to another. Or my praise to idols. We mentioned last week that when Jesus tells me, God tells me, you have left your first love. That implies that I have substituted him for something else. And that is what? Idol. idol. Put whatever label, that's an idol. If you cannot come, be busy for the Lord in word and deed because of, that's your idol. If you have to take care of whatever thing over and over, that's your idol. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. John Ruskin from the Victorian era over there in, in, in the United Kingdom. He wrote this beautiful. He who offers God a second place offers him what? No place. God says he will not yield his place to no one. And I believe that men like this gentleman here lived about 300 years ago, I think, to be inspired to write that. He who offers God a second place offers him no place. That means that I have eradicated God from my life. But I'm a Christian. I am singing. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. When the call, when the call is, uh, when the road is called yonder, I'll be there. But yet I have shoved away that first love that once I had. God, numero uno, Dios, numero uno. I don't say how it's said in in, in. Dieu, Dieu. 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 Oh yeah, yeah, it's a Dieu. Yeah. Dieu. Number one. Deus numero uno. That's in Portuguese. Deus numero uno. Numero uno. Number one. God number one. He is irreplaceable. Irreplaceable. How do I make him number one? Okay? It's a matter of my decision. It's a matter of decision. I decide to open my Bible or just leave it there taking dust. I decide to bend my knees or to close my eyes and say, thank you, Lord, for this day. Or I can just go about my business. Mom used to say, have you said your prayers in the morning? He says, or oh, you want to be just like a little puppy. But even little puppies. Four o'clock in the morning, right out my window, we have holly trees. And those little birds are singing away, praising the Lord for a new day. But what about me? It's a matter of priorities, brothers and sisters. Don't sugarcoat yourself. Don't go 
lollygagging that I'm too busy, this or the other. It's a matter of priorities. The time is coming when the truth will be revealed in each one of us. What are we putting in our spiritual life? Usually, when it comes down to nominating committee, we go and then sometimes, sometimes says, hey, why didn't you uh, ask brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so? You know, sometimes you cannot give explanation, but the whole thing is, they don't, want, they don't, they don't want to be part of or the people that will serve for that term. They don't want to. I guarantee you that was not the case when they first met Jesus. But through the years, we get callous. Other things call our attention. The neon lights of life are pushing us away from the path. As we create space and make time to meet with God, we find our connection to him increasing and our intimacy and relationship with him grow. It's a matter of priority. Everyone, every single person that you read in the Bible, the ones with the greatest loads, they came to realize, King David, that he had to make what? Time and space, a willingness to be with the Lord. You can just look at it. Psalm 51. Do you know this fellow? Oswald Chambers. Your priorities must be God what? First. God what? First. God second and God third until your life is continually face to face with God. So what is he saying? That God should be what? My A and my Z. My Alpha and Omega. My first and my last and my life should be Confirmed around him. Around him. What is the exhortation? What is the solution that God gives me? Verse 5. Remember. Remember. Therefore, from where you have fallen. The second R, he tells me what? God will not allow me to, unless I want to, but he tells me, you must repent. You must repent. And then the third R is, you must return to where you once were. Because back then you were good. You, you were doing the right thing that I love. Or else I will come to you quickly, quickly, and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So let's dive into this. Remember, you know, you can just look in the Bible. You will see several or many uh, verses with the word remember. Remember means what? That I have forgotten something important. Amen. Right? That is what remember means. Remember. Like, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. The late C.D. Bruce, mighty man of God, he says that in one time he saw a version with this verse, remember your creator before you get any older, which makes sense. Because all of us, yesterday we were younger than today, and today we're younger than tomorrow. Remember your Creator before you get any older. What about this one here? We all know this one, right? 
Remember what? Lot's wife. What happened to Lot's wife? What happened to her? Do you know what happened to her at the end? Huh? What happened though? She lost whatever he, she had at one point. Can you imagine being dragged by two angels? And then lose your eternal life? So when God says, I have something against you, you have left, you have, you're not the same. You have put me on the, on the back seat. Remember, where, therefore, where you have fallen, <coughs> repent and go back and go back to where you were. Without Jesus, the fall from grace is a disaster. Means death. If we let go completely of Jesus. The second R, repent. Repent. Repent from what? John 8, 11 tells us about the woman caught in adultery. Remember that? And they were going to kill her. But not the guy that put her in that situation. How crooked is the world? God says repent because you have left your first love. And in the Bible, we only repent from sin. So leaving, leaving, forsaking, abandoning our first love is a sin. No questions about it. It is a sin. Have you left? Have I left? Something to ponder about. Your first love. Leaving your first love is sin. It's sin. No question about it. It is not a mistake. It is not an oops. It is not a boo-boo. It is not an isolated habit. It is sin. And the only way to fix that sin is to come to the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. If we have committed sin, we have an advocate unto the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So there's a remedy. There's a solution. There is medicine, spiritual medicine. 2022, I was at Nosoka Pines for the VLP training, the mandatory one that everybody has to show up. And I was sitting with Elder Gary Moyer. He is our secretary uh, at the conference. And I had the only first time conversation. I know, I, I've known him, but uh, it was time, you know, the only time that I had about 30, 40 minutes as we were um, having lunch. And in that conversation, I took a different view from this man, Pastor uh, Gary Moore. And of course, I know who he is and so forth, but when you talk to somebody and you get fellowship, then you start to see where that brother, where the sister is coming from, and then the concept that I had about him changes because now I know something else that I didn't know. I can understand that person. And now I said, my goodness, Pastor Gary Moyer, he's got a heart for this church. And this is what he said. He says, you know, the problem Dennison, that we have in our church is that we have taken God as an event. That parked up my whole being. Yeah. It is like, let me see. Where is the wind blowing? That's where I'm going to go. We take God as an event. It's 
It's a beautiful day. Let me go to the beach. Because Jesus said, come rest of water. But that same person would not leave his or her job to go to the beach on a week on a weekday. Why? Because that person has to work. So how come? I put this. Oh, we are so 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 clever as human beings. To take that. Take that as an event. That has not, has not left my mind. And every day that I think about it, Lord, help me not to take you for granted. Lord, help me not to take you like you're my genie. Whenever I'm in trouble, there I come. See what kind of wish you will grant me to get me out of my situation. We have to make sure, moving forward, church, that we make sure that God is the center of everything in our lives. So forget about playing games. Forget about that. You're not, we're not going to make it. We will not be overcomers. And you know what? Guess who is at your side? Satan. Putting things in your mind. Why? Why don't you check who's going to be preaching? Yeah, there are folks that won't come. I'm talking not about this one here. But there are many others. <coughs> Calling, hey, you know who's going to, who's, who, who's on the bulletin this week? You know who's in the bulletin? God is in the bulletin. He is the one speaking through mortal lips to bring us to bring us to where we should be when I reject Jesus when I don't have the same love that I once had I am telling him you are not worthy of that place let me make something that I am comfortable with and God will give us rope Rope, 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 rope. And before something happens, he says, let me rebuke you. Let me chastise you because I love you. Did we see that in the first uh, uh, verse? Proverbs 3. When I have decided that I don't want Jesus really involved in my life, that's when I start to walk. And it's a slippery slope. When you realize many a times, many a times, it's too late. Thank God that there's the prodigal son experience, so to call. Amen. That he came to his senses, right? And he says, what am I doing here? My daddy loves me. What am I doing in this big, big side? He got up. One of uh, one of the preachers out there in Texas, he says, the reason why we leave our first love is because we have become spiritually. <coughs> what is that word? Sadidi. Do you understand that word? Sadidi. Spiritual sadidi. Sister Zola, do you know that word? Have you heard it before? Mm -hmm. Spiritual sadity. Snob. Arrogant. I'm better than you. Don't tell me what to do. Egotistical. That's what the word means. When we have, and, it's, uh, and I just copy it down. Because he was talking about Ephesus. We have become spiritual sadi. Like we are. What? No. Snob. That's right. Snob. Snobs will not be in the kingdom. That's for sure. Will not. The third R. And the counsel from the Lord is what? To return. 
to return before it is too late. Revelation. Return and do what? Do your first works or else. Or else. That else I put it in red. There's a warning for us. After God gives us counsel and counsel and counsel for us to make it right with him. There's nothing else left. There's nothing else left. I will come to you quickly and remove you. Unless you repent. This is what we, you, we need to do. 180 degree. Right? Oh, just like this little girl. Look at that. 180 degree. Boy, she knew that she was like, yeah, and look at that. Swift. 180 degree. That's why you and I, if we want to be overcomers. You know, the overcomer know, knows that God is first. That re the relationship with God is intentional. That is not based on your mores. Is not based on what you think. Is not based on the creed that you want to hear. It is based on the thus says the Lord. In fact, let me suggest this. Let the relationship between you and your God is not a religious pacifier. Just because of us, Seventh-day Adventists, just because we know that the seventh day is the is Saturday, the seventh day that God has separated. And that will be a distinction between the overcomers and the, and the ones who did not want to overcome. That doesn't make us any better than the other folks if we have left our first love. Mind you, go back. They had done so many wonderful things. I know your toils. I know how hard you work. To the point, the Greek says, to the point of exhaustion, they have given, but they were just like me mechanical. No feeling. Just do it because, you know, that's all we, we know. No feeling, no love. Take this with you. John 14, 21. Look at this. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. Did you get that? And he who loves me will be loved by my what? By my what? Father. And I will love him and will disclose myself to him. This one here is the main, the main point of this verse. The one that loves me, to him I will disclose myself. So if we have Jesus a second base, as a spare tire, as a genie, he already tells me, tells me that I don't love him first. So how do you think he will have the trust to disclose himself to me? If I would just take this like a put it in the trash. That's what he says. You want to know about Jesus? You want to know about his love to you? The plans that he has for you in the future about your family? We gotta put him first. We gotta put him first. The devil is so clever that he hits us where he knows that he will bring us down. Right there. It doesn't matter. I was bred, born, and raised in the Seventh day Adventist Church, and I praise God for that. A lot of times, people, classmates along my my way, oh, you do not know anything. Oh, yes, I do. I do. As pastor kids, we went to Methodist school, Anglican school, Catholic school, atheist school. 
And I had the opportunity of dissing Jesus for something else. But at the end, I was confronted. What do you know? What do you have that they don't have? That you would be something good for you? I have to make up my mind. I have nothing there. I appreciate a lot of things that I learned through those churches. But it doesn't matter. What matters is how much love I have for Jesus and even more is he first is he first if there's something in your life that you cannot love Jesus as the first and only first you need to make some arrangements you will not die of thirst of hunger as the Bible tells you David said, I was a little fella, and I am an old fella, but I have not seen a, someone begging bread or his posterity. God will take care of you if you put him first. Give, 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 give your best to the master. That is the song we're going to sing. Two stanzas. Give your best to the master. Give your strength of your youth. Put him first. That's the second stanza. Put him first. And I hope that each one of us will ponder throughout this week and level off, level off our stance with the Lord because we don't have much time. We don't have much time. Let's stand up and sing it as, as you mean it. Father, I do realize that sermons like this is not the cup of tea for some. But at least in this congregation, Lord, I am praying that at least one person 
will make the right decision. Let it start with me. To go back to the first love I had for you. Without it, doubtly, I will be among the overcomers. So I pray for these brothers and sisters of mine that we all make up our minds to be overcomers. Putting you first. And if we do that, everything else in our lives, messed up lives, will fall into place. We cannot do it on, on, on our own. But you have promised that the Holy Spirit is right there to help us. And you have your ministering spirits, the Holy Angels, to aid us as well. The only thing is the exercise of my will that you cannot bend. But also you realize that you will never ever take second place. So Lord, help us to think about it the rest of the week. Thank you for giving us, giving us life today to come to church. Keep us safe until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.